Kyushu and a kata called San Chin. Now there are many variations of San Chin. Today we're going to take a look at one that resembles closest uh, Pongayu or Weichiru Karate. Uh, this is a very open hand uh, form. I am going to do a little alteration because of the size of the recording studio. I'll be doing a switch step instead of an advancing step. But again, it's the concepts that I'm going to show you after that's more important than the kata. Everybody's going to have a stylish, stylistic difference in the kata, but it's the weapons we're going to be using, the techniques that we're going to be using, the tools, the targets. That's the important thing we want you to take away from. Now, San Chin, um, in, during the San Chin practice, you develop something called Iron Shirt. The reason why you develop the Iron Shirt is so you can take strikes. You can be impervious to um, damage from your opponent. Now we do that so we can enter. So I believe San Chin is an entering form, where you enter into the person trying to get a quick uh, upper hand, a uh, neurological shock, or a dropping of the person, so you are subdued. It's a one second blast, or maybe if there's uh, more uh, fighting ability on your opponent's side, the ability to offset some of their power and their strength and get an opening. It also works on if they have uh, something called Iron Shirt as well because the entering techniques are sometimes hard for a softer individual and sometimes soft for the harder individual. So it offsets with the yin and the yang principles if someone is very tense, uh, as if they were doing uh, sanchin themselves or an iron shirt type of an idea, we work in with the soft approach, so it weakens the body. So the Kyusho strikes can penetrate deeper and have a greater effect. Consequently, if someone is more relaxed than an easygoing fighter, or not an easygoing fighter, but someone that's a little more relaxed in their approach, then you would go in with the harder attack. So again, we're thinking of the yin and the yang, or the positive, the negative, the strength, and the weakness. And that's what's going to be our sanction. This was just a primer for you to get a sense of um, where, where your kata can go and what you can do with this thing. It's a very powerful kata. In fact, I'm going to show you today that it's, it's pretty much a whole system. Okay, you can take this for all different uh, ranges of fighting, all different styles of fighting. Okay, later on when we get into the kata seisan and the sansei ru, we'll change the dynamics a little bit. So you, if you enter with um, san chin and the person gets to put up a fight and you miss the target, you have other applications that get a lot more involved and a lot more um, dangerous for your opponent. Right now we're going to go into the head points. Okay? All, the tech, all the hand postures out of the kata are going to work on head points as well, and I'm just going to show you just a few examples of this. First point we're going to practice point out is um, stomach nine. Now this area right across the middle section of the neck is, is prime. Again, I don't believe that they're pressure points. I'm calling them pressure points so people that have this in their mind from Kyushu studies before, they're acclimated to it. It's easy to look up a pressure point on a, um, an acupuncture chart. Again, the best thing to do is get out a medical um, textbook and start understanding what the heck you're hitting under here. It's not a pressure point that's on the surface of the skin. It's the nerve and the vascular tissue underneath that's the important part and also things Inside the uh, reflexive actions called the muscle spindle cells and Golgi tendon organs is a whole anatomical thing. You don't have to know this. It's, for some people, it's interesting. Anyway, this is a great area to target, okay? And I know everybody thinks the karate chop or the, the chop coming this way, and everybody understands that could be a lethal blow. Okay, very hard to kill a person with your bare hands, by the way. But there are nerves that run through this sternocolatoid mastoid muscle. Now, there's an accessibility to that nerve on the front. It's called stomach 9 for you pressure point guys. It's called large intestine 18 on the outside, okay? And on the back, it's gallbladder 20. So if he's straight at me and I attack this way, I'm most likely going to catch that frontal aspect or the stomach 9 area. If he comes in with his head turned just a little bit, or I've turned his head in the combat uh, section, I'm going to be able to strike with the iron sword, uh, application, which is just this wrist bone, it's not the edge of the hand. That would be hitting soft against soft, and it, you'd be working hard. You don't need strength if you penetrate with hard bony substances into the soft tissue down to the, the actual target of the nerve or vascular tissue. In this segment, we're only going after the nerve because it's more superficial, it's easier to get to, causes great body reaction and dysfunction with no damage. If I get deeper into the tissue, which would be called more dimmock than the Q-show, 
then what's going to happen is I'm attacking blood vessels, and that's where it gets a little bit dangerous. People always say, oh, you're running the risk of hurting the person right in through here. Well, we've been doing this for 30 some odd years, and nobody's ever gotten hurt from this. Why? It's because we're only hitting the nerves. We do the nerve techniques. But bear in mind, when you're in a real combative situation, you're going to hit harder. You have the potential to penetrate through the vascular tissue, so you get the nerve and the vascular tissue, plus the muscle spindle cells and all the internal components of the reflexive system and the autonomics, and you're going to have a much greater, greater effect. Okay, if he had turned all the way for some reason, a body rotation, I could catch right into what's called the gallbladder 20. Again, same line. So it doesn't matter which way he turns his head. So if he comes in with this type of a hooking action, all I have to do is, again, step out to my posture at that, that position. Could you come in with that tap right there into there? As he comes in, you have yourself um, a dramatic effect on the body, as you can see. You okay? Explain what just happened. Uh, uh, yes, I I felt uh, like uh, uh, a big uh, vibration mm -hmm. go down to my arm and also to my my feet. Okay, uh, could you see? Uh, maybe for a few seconds, no. Okay. Did you get a white flash or a, everything go black? No, it was white. Okay, the white signifies that you got the neurological structure, the more superficial structure. If everything goes to black, what happens is uh, it's more of a fainting response, and that's because you got deeper into the uh, vascular tissue. All right, so we always check with our, uh, our partners to find out exactly what happened, to monitor, okay, I hit that deep, that's what it feels like, okay? It's not intellect. What it is, is it's tactile response. So if we verify with each other what just went on in the technique, we can refine and we can further understand, okay, I need this kind of power to cause this kind of effect, I need this kind of a weapon. So this is how you get your infinite basis, okay? You are in a mode of self-discovery and a discovery with your partner to understand. Now this might seem crazy that John Luca um, uh, volunteered for this type of filming, but at the same time that he's getting hit, okay, he's learning as well. He's feeling where this goes, he understands exactly what it does to the body, okay? And this is one of the components um, a lot of people seem to miss out on. Okay, you need to feel as well as you need to give. Okay, this isn't a demonstration, it's a give and take, so you really get a full education.